people of the internet. So we're going to be making our own fourth implementation, that is fourth the programming language, uh, and we're going to make it with Swift, the programming language. So we're going to implement a fourth interpreter in Swift. Um, I was just going through, you know, people comment on, on my fourth videos a lot. A lot of people like those videos. Um, and I, I don't know, somehow some chain of comments got me thinking about, you know, fourth. And then I started thinking like, it might probably wouldn't be too hard to make my own fourth interpreter. Uh, and then I was kind of looked at it, looked online and I found this article, write yourself a fourth. And I found this Reddit post. And they both kind of have the same idea, you know, they just show this, the simple, kind of the basic necessities of a fourth interpreter, of what it does. And um, so I went, I went, you know, we're going to go through this basically, and uh, there's, there's exercises in this Write Yourself a Fourth ex, um, article. I want to go through each of these exercises and basically make our own fourth interpreter with Swift. So I, the reason I went with Swift, so I started going with Rust for like a low level, you know, high speed type thing. Um, and it just was, it was being too complicated. I was like, this is just isn't fun. So then I thought like maybe, you know, the opposite of complicated is Python. Uh, and then I thought, but that's almost just too, it's too like, it's gonna be too bulky and slow. And I thought Swift, if I made it in Swift, then it could run on like iOS, <clears throat> which would be cool too. So, so that's what we're doing. We're doing Swift. And it seems to be a happy medium between Rust, the difficult complexity of Rust, and the simplicity of Python. Um, I'm actually, I actually really enjoy Swift, the programming language. I know that might be like heresy to say that or blasphemy or whatever it is, but uh, I, I really like the, the language. So um, that's what we're going we're gonna to do. We're going to make a fourth interpreter with Swift. Now, you can watch these videos, you know, and, and just see the, get the idea and, and, of how this stuff is done and, and write it in whatever language you want, really. Um, the reason, I, I guess w one of the things that made me think this, think that this was something that would be a good thing for videos and possible was that I, I s noticed a couple fourth implementations that are like, that fit on like the boot sector of a floppy disk. So like, you know, less than like a few kilobytes of data, um, just, you know, like fourth Im implementations in like 200 lines of assembly code, just insanely small programs doing just very little. So um, <clears throat> I thought hmm, might be fun to try. So that's what we're going to do. So to get started, uh, let me just show you kind of some, some basic things. So we have our terminal. Let me get to uh, shell. It's a big, yeah, big text so you guys can see it. So um, we're going to make a folder. Um, you don't really need a folder, actually. You just need a text file, but I'm just going to make a folder anyway. We're going to call it crux fourth, um, just because. Okay. And then in that directory, let me pull up my file browser just to show you that way. Uh, we're just going to make a new file. And you probably don't have this new file button unless you have the app that I have. The app is um, new file menu. It's in the app store if you want that. But um, yeah, just new file and just do a text file. You just call it whatever you want, you know. I'm just going to call it crux fourth. Uh, I'll just call it main. That's I think that's kind of more standard. Main.swift save. It's going to say use text or use both. I'm going to say use both and then I'm just going to go rename it and just take off that txt at the end. Okay, so now we have our main.swift file. We'll open that with text main. Okay, just a blank file. And uh, the first thing we need is just a, a basic, uh, make that bigger. First thing we need is just a basic um, Swift library called foundation. That gives us the, the ability to do things like print, I believe, and you know, other things like that. Uh, and then we're going to jump right into it. We're going to print to the terminal. We're going to say, welcome to crux fourth. Put a new line character in here. And then just put some uh, <clears throat> some of these. We'll do four of these um, 
arrows, just four, like four, I don't know. Oh, and then, um, so let's run this real quick. And uh, there's gonna be one little thing we have to do here, one little adjustment we have to make. So to run it, we're gonna, uh, we wanna make sure we're in that Cruxforth folder. So CD Cruxforth have our main file in there and then we just do to run any swift program from uh, the terminal on an apple computer and by the way if you don't have an apple computer you can run swift it's available it's open source it's available on windows and linux as well um, so it is possible if you want to you know follow along still and you're not on apple you can do that so uh, to run it on apple in terminal xc run swift and then the file name which is main.swift We'll run it here and there we got our we got our output welcome to cruxforth but if we so well let's just keep going so we'll, the main thing that you need in fourth and let's go back to this website here write yourself a fourth so the first objective is read fourth code from some input stream they'll show there shall be a get next function to get the next word make sure to skip white space correctly so let me explain that. So in fourth, uh, the interpreter basically interprets everything that there is, whatever it sees, uh, letter by letter, you know, character space by character space. And um, it assumes it's all one word until it sees any white space, whether that's just one space or 10 spaces, whatever it is. Uh, that's where it, it this, you know, it realizes, okay, we're going on to the next word. So like we can say, you know, two, two plus, and that's going to, uh, that's going to put two on top of the stack. And then it's going to put another two on top of the stack. And then plus is going to add those two together, which is going to, means the stack is just going to have a four on it then. Uh, now, if we put those twos together like that, it's just going to put a 22 on the stack and try to add it to nothing. And we're going to get an error. So anyway, one of the things that I, as I've been explaining that, you've heard me say a number of times, stack. We need a stack, and that's an integer stack. Um, this, the, uh, some fourth, Im, some floor, fourth implementations have like an integer stack and then a floating point stack. But uh, the, the first thing, the most basic thing is the integer stack. So that's where we're going to start here. All right, so read fourth code. So the first part of this, read fourth code. we got to read, read the input, right? So while let input equals read line. So that's in Swift. That's how we, um, you know, if there's input, if there's anything in the console, then it's going to go into this input variable. And as long as there is something in the console, you know, while it's there, then we want to do this. Let input array. We're going to, so we're going to put all our input um, into an array. So say we have like the two, two, and plus again, it's going to be an array of two, two, and plus, or well, just two and two, because it's going to be the integer stack. Um, no, actually, I guess it would be plus at first. So, um, and then, uh, you know, if we had 22 plus, it would, it would be an array of 22 and plus. And um, the way we're doing that is with this function here, um, input.components separated by, and oops, wow, a lot of double quotes there, separated by colon space. Okay, so this components function takes the input and it separates it into separate indexes in the array um, based on what's where it sees a space. So basically, anytime it sees a space, it's going to make that a new sec a new piece of the array. Okay. It's pretty simple. Actually, it's really simple how that's done in Swift. Um, in you know other programming languages, converting uh, text separated by spaces into an array could be quite a bit more complicated. Okay. Then we have, uh, we're going to, we're going to have to process that input, right? So let's see. 
read for, from some input stream. We already got that. It's coming from our console. There shall be a get next function to get the next word. We don't really even need get next with Swift. We almost, we just can skip that basically because we're just getting everything that's there instead of the next thing. And we're separating it all into this nice array. It's like, it's like the, the thing that we should be doing after we have the get next function really. Um, so a lot of the work is being done for us here by Swift, which is cool. Make sure to skip white space correctly. Yeah, so we're doing that. So basically this is what we need. Let's, Let's see what happens uh, here if we do print input, you know, after we get our input array. Or actually, let's do this. Let's pop this out of this while loop. Print input array. Let's see what we get here. Oh, we got an error. Type annotation missing. Oh, sorry. Int stack, that's an array of integers. We're not even using this yet, so don't worry about it. Initialization of immutable variable input array is never used. Consider replacing with assignment or removing. So that's just a warning. You cannot find input array. There must be some scoping issues here. So let's just cut this and paste it here. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we see another problem here that we're gonna have to fix. Instead of being on the same line as the four arrows, like this is where we should be putting our input, it moves us to the next line, and I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. But let's try putting a, a number there. Okay, 20. Let's try 20, 30, 40, 50. All right, cool. So we're getting our array. So that's that's a huge step right there. That's good, that's a good start. Uh, control C to exit out of that. <clears throat> so here's how we fix our, um, our weirdness going on with our with the four arrows there. On our print statement, we're gonna give it a second um, argument, and it's just gonna be double quotes, okay? So this is just saying, uh, instead of terminating with a new line, just terminate with nothing. So normally, you know, naturally what Swift is gonna do as a terminator, it's gonna say, it's going to print this, and then to terminate, it's going to print a new line. So basically like that, we're just saying don't do that. So now if we run it again, we should just get, yeah, see now we can just enter our text right next to our arrows. All right, so I think that's a good place to stop for right now. In the next video, we are going to work on processing this input now. We're, we're getting this input. Now we need to do something with it. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and peace out.